الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما ينفعنا ولا تجعل في معلمتنا وبالنا علينا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to be taking uh, rulings related to uh, fasting so if you have a notebook inshallah ta'ala write if you don't then inshallah ta'ala you could use your uh, phone to take notes inshallah ta'ala in the so fasting is coming we have to know the rulings of fasting right so basic points that we have to know number one what does the word as-sawmu mean what does this word mean hey i ask questions you guys answer it and then I answer it if it's not right and if it is I'll say that's good hey what is sawm so in the arabic language the word as-sawm is what al-imsak is to what refrain inni nadartu lir-rahmani sawman as allah mentioned in the quran that maryam said i am going to refrain from what speech hey what does it mean in the sharia fasting what does fasting mean in the sharia what does as-sawm mean istilahan technically hey hey ibrahim hey so ibrahim said it, it means al-imsak 'an al-akli wa-shurbi it's to withhold from eating and drinking is that enough or is that a definition which is very deficient huh So the definition inshallah ta'ala is at-ta'abbudu lillahi azza wa jalla it is to worship Allah because it's an act of worship some people they might say to you fasting is a healthy diet and it's good for your health it might have that but that's not why we fast we don't fast so we can lose weight yeah is that why we fast no we fast because it's an act of worship so this definition we have to add in there the word at-ta'abbudu lillahi azza wa jalla we worship Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala by what? Al-imsak anil mufattirat to withhold from the mufattirat the things that break our fasting and the things that are breaking our fasting is what? Al-aklu, eating wal-shurbu, drinking wal-jima' sexual intercourse and everything that break, breaks your fast it goes back to one of these three anything that breaks your fast is breaking your fast because it falls under one of these these three eating drinking or sexual uh, intercourse from what time min tulu' al-fajr ila ghurub al-shamsi so it's from fajr to what time to maghrib so we defined it right so that's what fasting is okay second question now the first question was what was the first question the first question was, what is fasting? We all know what fasting is, right? We all know what fasting is, right? The second question I want to ask you all is, what is the ruling of fasting? Nope, I just stuck to that. I just said, what is the ruling of fasting? This, not fasting this or fasting that. What's the ruling of fasting? Hey? Fasting generally is what? Recommended. That's the asal. That's the default position. Fasting originally is what recommended. It only becomes obligatory in what? No, not only Ramadan. It becomes obligatory of one of two situations. The first one is Ramadan, which is that it's been made obligatory on you. That was not your choice. The second one, like in, is when you make it obligatory on yourself, like Sawmu, Sawmu Nadrin. You say you make another. Are we all together? The third one, inshallah ta'ala, is that it's if it's a kafara, an expiation. It's an expiation. Like you said, my wife is like my mother, for example, which is known as dihar. You have to fast how many months? Shahraini? 
mutatabi'aini, two consecutive months you have to fast. Or if a person has sexual intercourse with his spouse in the month of Ramadan, what do they need to do? Fast? Two consecutive months, huh? So this is the three types of fasting which are obligatory. Ramadan, sawmu nadhrin, and a sawm which is kafara. Does that make sense? If I'm not making sense, you can put your finger up and I'll, I'll repeat it for you. So the, the fasting is mustahab, it's recommended, and it only becomes obligatory in one of those three situations. Does that make sense? Very good. So what's the evidence that fasting of Ramadan is obligatory? What's the delil, delil evidence? Ah, yeah. So the ayah, ya ayu ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. The ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. So this ayah says, kutiba alaykum usiyamu. What does that mean? Ay furida alaykum usiyamu. The fasting has been made obligatory on you. Also Allah says in another verse, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ Anyone who witnesses the month of Ramadan, what should they do? They have to, they have to fast. And of course, the hadith of Ibn Umar, Buni al-Islamu, ala khamsin, Islam is built upon five things, and from them is what? The fasting of the month of Ramadan. Good. Third question. Third question. Who can remind me what the first question was? Hey, what was the first question? What is fasting? What was the second question? What is the ruling of fasting? Sah? And we broke the fasting into how many categories? We said that the obligatory fasting is what? So first, you're right, we categorize the fasting generally into two. Obligatory fasting and voluntary fasting. And we said that the obligatory fasting is how many? Three. Which number one is what? Ramadan. That is, Allah made that obligatory on you. The second one is known as Sawmu Nadirin. I mean, Sawmu Nadirin means you made an oath to make that fasting. Now it becomes obligatory on you. And the third one is what? Kafara. It's an expiation. Sah? Good. The third question, inshallah ta'ala, is what are the conditions of fasting? Shurutu Sawm. What's the condition of fasting? Oh, yeah. So you have to be a Muslim. If you're not a Muslim and you fast, is it going to be accepted from you? So if your friend Ben in school says to you, look, I want to fast with you Muslims in the month of Ramadan, and he fasts, is he going to be rewarded for it? No, because he's not what? He's not a Muslim. For him, the fasting to be accepted, or the, the salah, uh, fasting to be accepted is what? Or for it to be valid, what's, it need, what's needed? He has to be a Muslim, that's number one. Number two is what? What's the condition? So mukallaf means what? Aqil and balig. So he has to reach age of puberty. Are we all together brothers? He has to reach what? Age of puberty. But let's say if a child fasts and he hasn't reached age of puberty, is his fasting accepted? But it doesn't make sense here then. We just said that the reaching the age of puberty is a condition. But the condition hasn't been met. He hasn't reached the age of puberty. Remember when we use the word condition, is tahara condition? Is tahara for the salah a condition? Purity, is it a condition for the prayer? If a person prays without that condition, is it a salah accepted? But we're saying the same thing here. We're saying that reaching age of puberty is also a condition. But then we're still saying that if he fasts and he hasn't reached age of puberty, it's what? Valid. How does that work? Are you? Uh, uh, puberty uh, makes it hard upon the person. Okay. So it's a side benefit that you all need to remember, which your brother kind of pointed out. The shart is two types. The shartu wujub and shartu siha. We all together. Shartu wuju means the condition for this thing to be obligatory on you is what we're talking about here. Like in shartu siha means if a person fasts and the conditions haven't been met, the fasting is still valid. Like in tahara to salah is what? The shartu siha. Meaning your salah won't be even accepted at all because you haven't met the condition. Does that make sense? It's due to the, what the conditions are. Anyways, that was a side point. Okay, so the first condition is that you're a Muslim. The second condition we said is that you have to reach age of puberty. The third condition we said that you have to have what? Sanity. 
You have to be a person who's sane. The fourth one is that you are what? Qadirun ala sawm. You have the ability to fast, so you can't be a sick person. Are we all together? Are we all together, brothers? Ability is also, it's also there. Does that make sense? So those are the four, inshallah ta'ala. As for the person who's sick, we're going to come to it later. The two the people who are sick are going to be categorized into two. A person, maridun nyurja buru, he's sick. We hope, inshallah, he's going to get better. And a marid, a person who's sick, but has a terminal illness, there's no hope that he's going to get better. Okay? They're two different people. We're going to come to that later. Does that make sense? But the sick person is always what? Are we all together? The fourth, inshallah ta'ala, question. So let's repeat it again. What was the first question? What is fasting? The second question was what? What is the ruling of fasting? The third was what? What are the conditions of fasting? That's why it's important to write. The fourth question, inshallah ta'ala, is when is it obligatory for a person to come with an intention for fasting? When? We're talking about Ramadan, by the way. Or let's just say, when does a person have to come with the intention of fasting? Generally, let's speak it, let's keep it general. Yeah? Before Fajr. All types of fasting. It's good. So we have to be sharp here. So we divide the fasting into two. We divide the fasting into what? Voluntary fasting and what? Obligatory fasting. The voluntary fasting, you can come with your intention in the daytime. No problem. You come home, you ask your wife, you come home, you say, honey, is there food? She says to you, no. There's no food. Say, I'm fasting, inshallah ta'ala. No problem. Sah? Just like the Prophet ﷺ did. He came home. And he asked his wife, Aisha, is there any food? And she said, no, there is no food. And he said, Inni I'm a fasting person now. And his intention started when? The daytime. That's when it's voluntary fasting. But when it's obligatory fasting, when is the intention required? Before Fajr. Anytime before Fajr. Are we all together? If that person doesn't come with the intention before Fajr, is that fasting valid? That fasting is valid? It's invalid, sorry. Have to come with the intention. Does that make sense? That was the what? Fourth question. The fifth question is, is it enough to have one intention for the entirety of Ramadan or do I have to make an intention for every single night, every single night of Ramadan? Meaning, do I have to make it every day before Fajr? Is each of the fasting looked at independently? Or do we look at Ramadan as one continuous act that is connected, all of it together? Yeah? Every night you have to make attention. So, what's the name, Habibi? Same name, inshallah. That's why I know you're smart. So, Abdurrahman mentioned that it's what? That you have to have every single night, you have to have what? An intention. Hey, anyone else have another uh, idea? I, I think it's, it's wajib at the beginning of the month to have intention for the whole month, but every night beforehand or every fajr before is better to do it. But it's not obligatory. No, it's not hey, yeah. If <coughs> you have to come with the intention at the start of Ramadan, but if something causes you to stop fasting, for example, traveling or uh, you're sick, and you have to use your attention again. Mm. Allahu Akbar. We've got nice, three nice views. Allah Ambari. The first view, he said, he said what, this was, what was the first view? Every single night. Man lam yubayyit al-siyama, man lam yubayyit al-niya, fala siyama lahu. Sah? The person who doesn't come with the intention, he has no fasting. That's the first view that was mentioned. The second view that was mentioned was what? It's recommended to come with the intention for every single uh, d uh, day. Or every single night before Fajr, one time the beginning is needed, khalas. The rest is recommended for you to come with it, it's not obligatory. That was the second view. The third view said, Tafseel. Tafseel. Which is what? All of Ramadan, 
You can start an intention with it. You can start what? An intention with it. But if it happens that within Ramadan, something disconnects this fasting, you have to mention your intention or bring your intention again so you can carry on your fasting for, for that day. So you traveled yesterday and the next day, you have to come with an intention before Fajr. Are we all together, brothers. So according to that view, he agrees with what? The second view in the sense where if that person doesn't travel or no disconnection of his fasting, the first intention is enough. Are we all together? So what I say inshallah is the mas'al is khilafiyya. There's a dispute amongst the ulama. And whenever you see these kind of disputes and some scholars are saying you don't have fasting and some scholars are saying you have fasting, khurujan min al-khilaf. It's better to leave the khilaf. What should you do? Come with your intention. How do you come with your intention? The fact that you woke up for suhoor is enough as an intention. Does that make sense? The fact that you woke up for your suhoor and you're eating your suhoor, that's enough for an intention. There's nothing you have to say special. Are we all together? Does that make sense, brothers? No. Next question, inshallah uh, ta'ala. What establishes what establishes fasting? About what? How do we know Ramadan has entered? What proves the entering of Ramadan? Bima yathbutu dukhulu shahar Ramadan. Tomorrow there's a dispute. When can we say Ramadan has now entered? Ayah. Ayah, Habibi. The sighting of the? The moon of which one? The new moon. So we sight, the first one is Ru'ya to Shahri, Ru'ya to Shahri Ramadan. We saw Ramadan, we sighted the crescent on the moon. Khalas, Alhamdulillah. Are we all together, brothers? That's one. What's the second? That's the sighting. So the first one is sighting Ramadan, the moon, we saw it. The second way of knowing that Ramadan has entered is what? Beautiful. Jazakallahu khayran. There's no sighting. When does the sighting happen? It happens on the 29th night, sah? Because the shahr, the month can be 29, can it not? So we look for it. If the moon is not sighted on the 29th night, we didn't sight it for, shahr, for Ramadan. What do we do? We, fought, we, we, sorry, we, we, we carry on Shaban. On the 30th, like in, the month cannot be more than 30, by the way. Are we all together? We have to complete it 30 days and then we move on to Ramadan. So there's two ways that Ramadan has come in. One is we complete Sha'ban at 30 because on the 29th night when we went out to look, we couldn't see anything. Are we all together? Or on the 29th night, we sighted the moon and now Ramadan has entered. Does that make sense? Those two are the ways that you can, Ramadan has entered now. Does that make sense? No? Yes? Good. Next question, inshallah ta'ala is, what about if a person, he sees the, the, the moon for Ramadan, or he sees the moon for Eid, the ending of Ramadan, or the beginning of Ramadan, he's seen it, and his witnessing has been rejected. He knows he saw it. They rejected him on some grounds. So we're not going to take your witness. Go. He knows, like he knows one day he's going to die. That he saw the, the moon for, for Ramadan to come in. What does he do in this situation? Are you? Yeah? So does he fast or does he not fast? He fasts. Are you? He doesn't fast. So this is the difference, brothers. Ramadan is the month where there has to be congregation. Are we all together, brothers? Ramadan, there's a what? There's congregation. Outside Ramadan, like in, there's no condition for congregation. Does that make sense? What do I mean by that? If a person believes the place that he's in is a voluntary fasting. 
He believes that the Maghrib prayer where his locality pray is wrong. He cited it himself. He knows Maghrib came in before everybody else. He can follow that schedule he personally witnessed. Does that make sense? But in Ramadan, he's not allowed to. Are we all together? In Ramadan, he has to do it with what? The people. So the sighting of the moon and the leaving of Ramadan, if these testimony has been rejected, it doesn't matter. He has to what? He has to follow the people. Okay? The next question. How many people are required and needed for the entering of the month of Ramadan? Mm -hmm. The front brothers are only answering the question. How many people are required for to say Ramadan has entered? Oh, yeah? Habibi. Oh, yeah. Who believes no, uh, one person is not enough? Oh, yeah? Three people. MashaAllah, Allah Barik. Eight witnesses. I think it's not so much today. <laughs> I just said, you don't want to fast, do you? He said, eight witnesses you need. So yeah, how do you... Yeah, two witnesses. The, each issue, there's evidences and... I'm just giving you the khulasa, right brothers? Because that's why we have to give summary of everything. The ending of the Ramadan, one witness is enough. The leaving of Ramadan, two witnesses is needed. Why? Because the entering of Ramadan, well, only one witness is needed to say Ramadan has entered, I saw it, one witness. The leaving of Ramadan, two people are needed. Why? Because people love Eid, right? A lot of people are going to be like, it's over. Wallahi, I saw it, one person. So to leave those issues, the scholars, they say, how many people are needed for Ramadan to leave? Two people. But for Ramadan to enter, we need what? If one person say, I saw it, and he's reliable, of course, then it's enough, inshallah ta'ala. And this is based on the hadith of Ibn Umar. He said, I saw, the, I saw the moon for the month of Ramadan. I informed the Prophet, and the Prophet went on it. And he saw it by himself. We don't know anybody else who saw it with him. Are we all together? Now we're gonna, the next question is, hey, who knows what all the questions, hey? Repeat it for me. What was the first question? The first question I asked was what? What is fasting, hey? The second question was what? Yeah? The ruling of fasting, hey? What did we say the ruling of fasting was? We said that the fasting is two types. Sah? The, the default position is fasting generally is what? Recommended. Only three times it becomes obligatory. What are the three times it becomes obligatory fasting? Ramadan. And so much is nether and so much is kafara. What was the third question? Yeah, that was, yeah. What were the conditions of fasting? Sah? We mentioned what the conditions of fasting were. How many things did we mention? Four, what was it? Muslimun, Baligun, Aqilun, Qadirun. That's what we mentioned, right? Those four. Right, what was the next question? Was that right after it? We asked the issue of? The intention, right? The intention of fasting, when is it needed? Depends on which fasting it is, right? If it's obligatory fasting, when do you have to come with the intention? Before Fajr. What about if it's voluntary fasting? When do you come with the intention? Anytime during the day. Even after Dhuhr? Even uh, five minutes before Maghrib? What about one minute before Maghrib? Uh, one minute before Maghrib, he never ate, never drank nothing. And he just said, you know what? I haven't actually eaten all day. I'm gonna now fast. Is that allowed? Some of you guys are like, this doesn't look good. I don't know what to say here. Are you? Maghrib hasn't come in yet. Jazakallah khairan. Inshallah. So these thobes are gifts. 
So anybody who answers the questions, inshallah ta'ala can have a thawb. It's a gift. So look at those back, the, all of that. And the, and the dates. Are we all together brothers? So look. Just to be clear, you can just answer the question, it doesn't have to be right. <laughs> no, you have to answer the question right. It has to be correct. Hey, yeah? What was the other question that we asked? The entering of Ramadan. We said, how many ways can we say Ramadan enters? Sighting the moon and the what? The completion of Shawwal. Shaban, sorry. Good. After that, we said what? Can one person, one person's sighting of the moon, is it enough? For entering Ramadan? It is. As for Eid, like in? Two. Who is allowed to break their fast? Who is the person who is allowed to break their fast? Number one is the person who is sick. The person who is sick has an excuse. That's number one. Number two is the traveler. He's also excused. Both of them, the evidence for that is from من شهد منكم مشارة فليصو ومن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر. So the sick person and the person who's a traveler, they both have to bring it another time. The third one is what? The mother So let's put before that الحائض الحائض والنفساء. The women who are on their menstruation and the women who are on their postnatal bleeding. Are we all together? Yani, the woman when she gives birth, she goes 40 days, she's on her menstruation. Sah after that, postnatal bleeding. And the women who are on their menses, they also have to what? They're not allowed to fast. If the woman goes, no, my iman is high, I love Allah, I'm going to fast. It's not permissible. Like in the person who is sick, okay, and this sickness is not going to harm his fasting, but he believes he is sick, okay, or he's a traveler, and he says, I still want to fast. Those are excused, and if he fasts, he won't be punished. Like in the woman who's on her menstruation, and the woman that is on her, Postnatal leader, she's not allowed, and if she does, she is going against Allah and His Messenger. Are we all together? The fourth one is the mother who is breastfeeding, the mother who is what? Who is pregnant or breastfeeding? Are we all together? The mother who is breastfeeding, we have to divide her issue, or the mother that's pregnant, we have to divide her situation into two. Who is she breaking the fast for? Is she breaking the fast for herself or is she breaking the fast for the child? If she's breaking the fast for herself, she takes the ruling of the sick person. Are we all together? If she feels like when she breastfeeds, she physically becomes sick from this, it causes her harm, then we say to her, you take the ruling of the sick person. In this situation, all you just have to do is after Ramadan, you just have to bring it back. Are we all together? What about if she breaks her fast because of the child? Not her, she's healthy, she's got no issue. But the doctor said to her, this child's gonna be affected from this fasting that you're doing. Are we all together? Or she feels when she doesn't, um, when she fasts, she doesn't produce enough milk, which is affecting the child. So now she's doing it for the child. In this situation, a large quantity of scholars, they say that she is now required to do what? She has to do what? And kafara with a, or a fidya with a, with the fasting that she has to bring back, okay? And the long discussions that the scholars have, this is number five, the fifth type of person who is excused when it comes to fasting is al-ajiz. This person is not sick, but he is an elderly person. He has no ability, okay? He's very old. old he's not able to uh, come with it. The sick person is divided into two. The one who is sick, and we believe inshallah ta'ala he's gonna get up from the sickness, inshallah ta'ala he just brings it back after Ramadan. Does that make sense? The one who has a terminal illness, 
he has to what? Not bring that back, that fasting. He just has to pay fidya. But let's say he has a terminal illness and two years later, he is off it. Allah, it's all gone now. Does he have to bring back the fasting? No. Are we all together? The illnesses is two types. A person whose illness we hope they're going to get better from it. If we feel like, inshallah, we're not going to say that, the doctors are going to say that. This illness is, he's got flu, headache, stomach ache. That's an illness that we all get up from, right? He's got a very, very high temperature. He has to just bring back the days he misses. But if the illness is cancerous, for example, or he has diabetes and etc., he has to do fidya. Even if he, for whatever situation happens and he gets better after that and the illness goes, he can't say, my illness, my illness was not a terminal illness. I got better from it. He said, Alhamdulillah. But your kafara, your fidya sufficed you. Does that make sense? The person, the fidya that they give, the one who's sick, the one who's the elderly man, for example, who is ajis, okay? Or the one who's got a terminal illness. What's the fidya that they do? It's two. Two ways that he does it. He makes food. And then what does he do? He calls the masakeen and he feeds them. That's one. How many masakeen does he have to feed? Yeah? So he said he can do that only one time. He can feed them only what? One time. Or the second way that's allowed for him is that he says, listen, I can't cook you guys food. I'm going to give you guys a raw meal. You guys cook it yourselves. Is he allowed to do that? He says, look at my face. You think I could cook? Yeah. So take this and cook it yourselves. I give it to you guys. He can. Because the evidences are general. He has to give food. It doesn't say that the food that they have to eat. It just means that he has to give them what? Food. But is he allowed to give them money? Yeah? He's not allowed to give them money. He has to give them what? The food. What's the ruling for the person who's fasting if he wants to do suhoor? You all know what suhoor is, right? Suhoor is that meal that you have to eat before Fajr, right? Somalis, they give you sar. Sah? What's it called in English, sar? It's a bit different from porridge. Because I can have porridge. I can never eat ambola or sar. Who likes ambola? Put your hand up. Who likes sar? So now help me translate it in English now. Ambolos, what's it? Kidney beans. No, no, it's not kidney beans. Black beans. It's a black beans. Okay, it's not baked beans. It's black beans. And the sword is what? Yeah, it's a Nigerian white thing that they have. What's it called? They call it fufu. What's it called like in? Somebody said yam. What's it called like in English? Maize, yeah, sahwa. You have that all day you don't need to eat, sah? Very strong, sah? You like it? You don't like it? So eating suhoor is what? It's recommended, it's mustahab. It's not obligatory. A large quantity of scholars, they say like and it is because of the Prophet sallallahu a hadith where he is يعني, very strong on the way that he spoke about the suhoor. Are we all together? يعني, تز... The Prophet said, لا تزال أمتي على خير ما عجلوا الفطرة ما عجلوا الفطرة وتسحروا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة My ummah are upon good as long as they what? وأخروا السحور My ummah are upon good as long as they what? They what? Hasten their iftar and they delay their what? Suhoor. Is a person allowed to break their fasting with other than eating? For example, intimacy. Ramadan, 
Maghrib has entered, he doesn't go eat. He has intimacy. Is he allowed to break it like that? Yeah? Are we all together? Or does he have to break it with dates and zamzam water or something? So it was mentioned Abdullah ibn Umar would sometimes break his fasting with intimacy. So that shows the permissibility of what? Not, not, not daytime, when Maghrib comes in and the Adhan goes off. So anything that breaks your fast, anything that breaks your fast can be used as what? From the three we mentioned, drinking, eating, or intimacy. They all enter there. Okay? But what is recommended to eat? Yeah? Tam tamr is, is good for you to eat. If you're diabetic and you're not, it's not good for you and you're not allowed, then that's another situation. There. But generally, it's good for you to break your fast with what? Dates. Yeah? Rutab. <coughs> Correct. And also, drink what? Water. What are the things that can destroy your fasting? Mufsidat al Huh? Okay, good point. Let's bring that point up. So swearing, does it break your fasting? If somebody says foul language, does that break their fasting? So from the Salaf, some of them re believe that, like Ibrahim and Nakha'i and others, they believe that the person who insults and they're fasting, he believes that it breaks your fast. Why? Because of the hadith of the Prophet Anyone who doesn't leave of idle speech and doesn't relieve of bad things, Allah has no subhanahu wa ta'ala will and doesn't want from you for you to leave water and drink in No, no, no. Are we all together brothers? So Ibrahim and Naka'i from this point, he took from it that the person who's vulgar in their speech and all of that, it will affect their fasting. And this is a view he holds like and it's not the strongest opinion, okay? It damages your fasting. It does damage your fasting, but it doesn't break your fasting. But you have to be very careful what you say, right brothers, when you're fasting. But the things that break your fasting by consensus is eating and drinking deliberately. What about if somebody eats and drinks in the month of Ramadan? Okay. Nasiyan. He is drinking and he has a full breakfast, full English breakfast. Is his fasting valid? Like that. He's, so what, how he's eaten? What's your evidence? We need evidence. Are you? Sahih, the hadith is the evidence. Are we all together, brothers? The person who what? Man akala, aw shariba. The person who ate or drank, of course, in the month of Ramadan. And he did it out of forgetfulness. Are we all together? Then that person, فَإِنَّمَا أَطْعَمَهُ اللَّهُ وَسَقَى Allah is the one who fed you. صح? Now this is a question. You saw this brother munching. You saw him eating with two hands. He should only eat with one hand, but he chose to eat with two hands. And you're right, he's right in front of you. Are you going to be like, Allahumma barik, Allah is feeding him. I'm not going to get involved. <laughs> yeah? What's the ruling here? I'm seeing his brother eating, and I know he's fasting, but he doesn't, I can see he doesn't remember that he's fasting. What do I do in this situation? That's it. And I, knowing that he could eat all of that and inshallah ta'ala use that energy for something. Shall I, do I, have, do I tell him or should I just let him eat? So who thinks I should let the brother eat? <coughs> Uh, yeah. Who thinks I should let the brother finish his meal and then I tell him after? <coughs> who would do that? Hey, who would 
straight away, as soon as he picks up the first piece, say, ah, be careful. <laughs> and not want him to eat. So you're not allowed to watch him. It falls under marra aminkum. Munkaran. Eating in Ramadan is a what? Even though he's not going to be punished for it, but it's a what? It's a munkar. Is eating in Ramadan for a person who has the ability to eat, is it, uh, is it good? No, so it falls under this hadith. Marra aminkum munkaran. So he's not going to be punished for it because he forgot. But I have to what? remind him in a gentle way. Say, the fasting is Ramadan. But when we were young, our parents, may Allah preserve them, and our yani, uncles and all of that, they would say to us, They would say, be quiet, be quiet. Allah brought, brought this provision for him, leave him alone. And so they would watch the brother eat or the sister eat. When they finish, they'd stay telling the heat. And we used to think that was right, but that's not right, sir. Also, what breaks fasting is smoking. Smoking falls under what? Whatever's taken in the mouth. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? So, that breaks your fasting. What about anything that enters? So now we said, we said eating and drinking. وَمَا يَقُومُ مَقَامَهُمَا And anything that stands in its position. For example, the brother goes, no, I don't eat. But he's got this, mashallah, glucose uh, and syringe. He puts it in his leg and he gets all the energies that he would get if he ate food. Sah? Are we all together, brothers? That also breaks your fast. Pay attention now. This is very important. The asp, what's called the asthma pump. The inhaler. The inhaler is divided into two. If it's just pure air that doesn't have any moist in it, it won't break your fast. And it doesn't strengthen you. If it gives you any form of strength, then it breaks your fast. If that inhaler or that uh, asthma pump is uh, pure air, just so you can breathe, but it doesn't give you any form of nutrition and there's no moist. So when you do that, you don't see any moist on your hand. Are we all together, brothers? Then inshallah ta'ala, there is no problem in that regard. Does that make sense? Number two, the second thing that breaks your fast. <laughs> sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse will break your fasting. So what will also enter there is sexual intercourse with your wife will break your fasting. So one brother heard, if you have sexual intercourse with your wife, he heard, I had a long email sent to me, the COVID years, the COVID days. A brother sent me a long email. He goes, Akhi, I watched your video on the ahkam of fasting. I benefited so much from it. And in there he said, if I have sexual intercourse with my girlfriend. Because <laughs> in my lecture, I said, if you have sexual intercourse with your wife, it breaks your fasting. So he goes, but I had sexual intercourse with my girlfriend. I said, the matter is what? It's worse. We're all together, brothers. So I, I now have to be clearer and say it's all forms of sexual intercourse, wherever you have it with, sir. Also, what falls under there is if a person yani, plays with their genital and there's something comes out of it, it also breaks your it also breaks your fasting. Are we all together, brothers? Does that make sense? Can you guys read between the lines? No, do you guys understand what I'm talking about? That breaks your fasting. Does that make sense? It breaks your what? It breaks your fasting. Another one, now we've mentioned the things that are agreed upon that breaks your fasting. There are now other things that the scholars dispute whether they break your fasting. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm just going to mention uh, it quickly. Hijama. Hijama. The scholars dispute and they disagree whether it breaks your and also what falls under there is blood donation. It's the same as hijama. Are we all together? So who believes hijama breaks your fasting? Who believes it doesn't break your fasting? So there's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars, inshallah ta'ala. But what I definitely would say is to stay away from it. Are we all together? Stay away from it. And the scholars that say, that it breaks your fasting, they use the hadith, Aftar al-Hajimu wal-Mahjum. 
The one that did the hijama and the one that was doing the hijama, both of them, their fasting is what? Is broken. So that's another thing that breaks your fasting. Also what breaks your fasting is that if the woman, ha while she's fasting, her menstruation starts. It breaks her. It also breaks her fasting. What also breaks her fasting is deliberately vomiting. Putting your finger in your mouth and deliberately vomiting will break your fast. at which is amd, deliberately. Another one that the scholars talk about that breaks your fasting that you mention is istinshaq al-bukhur. Which is, some brothers when they're fasting, they take the bukhur and they sniff it. And some of the scholars, like Rajna Da'iman, Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin and others, they gave that fatwa that it is mufsidat al-sawm. Why? Because it can, it has, it's a form of taqwiyah, it strengthens you. Okay? Now the next question is, what about if somebody deliberately breaks their fast? Deliberately, what's his ruling? A Muslim in the month of Ramadan, you see him in a chicken and chip shop, munching away. What's his ruling? Or you see him in the school canteen, ordering with his token. So, pizza and fries. And it's the month of Ramadan, it's Naharu Ramadan. You can see he's a brother. By the way, be careful with sisters. Brothers see a sister eating and he's like, sister, I just wanted to say it's Ramadan, you should be fasting. But well, this got nothing to do with you. Leave the sisters alone. Are we all together, brothers? Leave the what? The sisters alone. Like in the brothers, you see your brother, fi nahari Ramadan, fasting. And of course, he himself could also have an excuse. So we do make excuses for them. He could have a terminal illness and etc. But even then, brothers and sisters, when it's Ramadan and people are fasting and you are not fasting because of an illness, it is wise not to eat in front of the people, not because it's haram, not because it's haram. Min babi innaha Safiya bin Tuhuyayn. Meaning be careful, people might think bad of you. They may not ask you and they look at you and say, Alhamdulillah. Does that make sense? So don't open that door. But what about if the person deliberately breaks his fasting in Ramadan? Huh. He has to make up the fast, there's a sin upon him, and he also has to pay a kafara. So they have to pay kafara. Are you? Who agrees with those rulings? Are you? He's committed in major sin, he has to report Tawbah, and he's not allowed to repeat Okay, wow. So the, another, next, the second fatwa is. <laughs> you guys are giving me fatwa, don't you know? So the second one was you don't have to be what? To he has to repent for the sin that he did. <laughs> and he can't bring back that fasting if he deliberately missed it because the opportunity is gone. Okay, okay. Are you? The kafara is if he broke it, what? If he broke it with? Through intercourse. Okay, just eating is not. So let's say a brother called you and said, Salaam Alaikum, Shaykh. It was Nahari Ramadan. It was the month of Ramadan. Hey. Wallahi, I deliberately broke my fast. I went in the kitchen, got myself diet Pepsi, drank it, broke my fasting. Hey, yeah. After that, I thought, you know what? what? Why don't I just have intimacy with my wife? And then I went and had intimacy with my wife. What's my ruling? I'm repenting. I'm coming to you because I know what I did was wrong. But what's my ruling? Do you guys know why I'm asking this question? He broke his fast first. And then he said the idea of intimacy came to me after that. So he didn't break his fast because of intimacy. Are we all together, brothers? That's why brothers shouldn't get married in Ramadan. Sah? Brothers should not get what? In Ramadan. Aye, fadal. What's the situation here? If 
it's the person, someone who has ilm and knows the deen and whatnot and is not new to the religion, yeah, uh, then I think, I'm not 100% sure, no problem. if he broke it deliberately just to that first, I think that's the same as a person who leaves the salah and he's a kafir. But if a person is, uh, you know, new to religion or maybe accidentally just left it, for him, then he's a sinner, but like he, like that suffering. Okay. So the idea that the person who leaves fasting deliberately, leaves the fasting deliberately, actually there is somebody who held the opinion that he's a disbeliever, like Imam Ahmed. Ahmed ibn Hanbal held that opinion, it's one of his views. But if a person deliberately leaves fasting, he believes that he's a disbeliever. Are we all together brothers? But it's a very weak opinion. The only action that if you leave you're a disbeliever, the strongest opinion is what? Fast, uh, prayer. Are we all together? Like in fasting is what? You are a mate, you've you committed a major sin, brothers, okay? As for the brother who broke his fast from eating first, and then after that had intimacy, he's gonna get the harshest consequences for what he did. He has to do the what? He has to do the, the, the kafara for the jima that he did. Are we all together? And he has to also bring back the fasting. Does that make sense? What's the ruling on using miswak in Ramadan? So brother says, look, okay, when I'm fasting, my breath is not, is, not, is not best. And I need to clean my mouth. So what can I do? And a lot of us, when we wake up in the morning, what do we do in Ramadan? We clean our teeth. So uh, yeah, is it permissible? Uh, yeah. Inshallah ta'ala, brothers, clean your mouths, okay? <laughs> clean your mouths, inshallah ta'ala. Brush your teeth. Clean your tongues. And the evidence that some of the fuqaha used, which is the smell that comes from the mouth of the fasting person is more beloved to Allah than the smell of the what? A misk is not on this earth, brother. It's where? It's the day of judgment. Just like the martyr, his blood is going to be what? It smells better than the what? The misk is going to be when? Yawm al qiyamah. So, in this earth right now, that smell that's coming out of your mouth is not huh? now in this world. It's when you come Qiyamah, there will be coming out of your mouth the smell of your fasting. That's Qiyamah, not the dunya. So in the dunya, you can clean your mouth. Or oh, it's a sunnah for you to what? Clean your mouth. Because the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, as siwaku the siwak is what? Mat this hadith is mutlaq, general. For somebody to come and say fasting is an exception, he has to bring us what? He has to bring us evidence. This evidence is general, it applies in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. Are we all together? A brother had intimacy with his wife the night before. He slept, he went to the toilet. He went to the toilet, he did two, two he did uh, wudu. He came back to the bed, but he didn't do ghusl. He slept. It's Ramadan, right? He woke up and he's in a state of janabah. What's his ruling? Shall I repeat the question? Yes. A brother had intimacy with his wife after suhoor. And then he went to the toilet and he did wudu, bes. That's a sunnah, right brothers? Brothers, when a man has intimacy with his wife, after he does intimacy with his wife, what should he do? What should he do? If you don't want to do ghusl straight away, what should he do? The angels will not enter your house if, if, you're, if you're in state of Janaba. Yeah? The angels will not enter the house. They don't enter the house of the, the person who's in the state of Janaba. So in order to let the angels come in, what do you do? Go do and the go do what? Wudu. When you do the wudu, this is for you to say to yourself, allow the angels to enter, you can go into your bed. You wake up, guess what? When you woke up, you realize it's fajr. The adhan just went off. And you're still to janaba. You need to do ghusl and then go to the masjid. Is your fasting correct? Yeah? Even in Ramadan? Yes, your fasting is correct, inshallah ta'ala. What about if a man has intimacy with his wife, fi nahari Ramadan and Asiyan? Him and his wife both forgot, 
they had intimacy in the month of Ramadan. Yeah? Is it like the one who ate? But you have evidence for the one who ate. You have evidence for the one who had intimacy. So you're doing qiyas in ibadat. <coughs> Brothers, hey, fadal. Sahih. That evidence is more stronger than that. So the general evidence is Rabbana la tu in nasina aw akhtana. The next question, inshallah ta'ala, is Okay, now I'm going to ask you guys questions to give you guys the gifts of being the Kareem. Are you guys all ready? So the brother, brothers, are you guys ready? Why is everyone quiet for? You guys are not ready for the test? Okay, I'm going to pick the people, inshallah ta'ala, that I want to ask these questions to, inshallah ta'ala. Hey, yeah? I love the way you are listening. And I know, inshallah ta'ala, you can answer it. So what does fasting mean? Is that it? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? From what time? From, um, from Fajr to Maghrib. From Fajr to Maghrib, mashallah. You got it right. Hey, you have to come to get, pick up your thawb, inshallah ta'ala. Allahumma barik, Allahu akbar. Mashallah. Yeah, yeah, jazakallah khairan. Allahu khadra. Hey, Yeah, Juzulah, Nam. 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 Hey, yeah? Hey, you have Fadl, hey? Question. You know, earlier when you were saying the people were Brexit, epileptic people, mm. where did they fall into? Terminal the illness. <laughs> they became. They kafara, Kafara. They, they have. It's a maradul la yurja baru. It's an illness where they, they're not going to get better from it, sah? So that. Some people. If they do, then it's, it's well, not. They're not sure. There's no guarantee if they are. But some people actually do. Yeah, diabetic people, can they get better? Are there situations where a person was diabetic when he was young and then. Yeah, there are. I've seen a situation. A diabetic? That's an epileptic. Yes, I'm saying any, these illnesses can, with the qadr of Allah, of course, Allah's ability, it can become yeah, I mean, something a person becomes better from. But the asal is that a person who's epileptic <laughs> is generally considered to have a terminal illness. He just does kafara, he doesn't have to bring it back. Traveling, uh, <coughs> unnecessary, and not necessity traveling. You went, probably went to a different city to watch a football game. Or yeah. Very good question, which I actually did write the question for, but I forgot. Very good question. Barakallahu feek. That fasting, uh, the issue is the person who's traveling, if he's traveling to link up this girl in Manchester, and he's in London, and he goes, you know what, I'm going to come, and he jumps on the train, and he goes to Manchester and he goes, and it's Ramadan. Is he allowed to break his fast? One brother said, it, he was so angry, he said, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's doing bunkar, sah? But, do you, but can he? Can he, give it, can he be given that rukhsa? Can the, would the Sharia help him in his traveling? Is it going to be like, yeah, you don't have to fast in Ramadan? No, that's not allowed for him. Because what he's going to do is what? It's haram. So for him, this rule. There are scholars who believe it doesn't matter. The ayah is general. The ayah is what? General. And his punishment is external. Are we all together, brothers? Is that also a plan? It's not to suffer. Everything. And all the rukhsas are uplifted from, are not given to him. So shortening of the prayer, the issue of uh, fasting, all of those are not given to him. He has to pray normal because he's doing haram. Are you, are you with me, brothers? May Allah protect our iman and our, protect our children and our sons and our daughters from all of these bad, filthy things. And may Allah forgive us for our sins and shortcomings. Al-Fadl. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's 
Assalamu alaikum. We usually in East Africa have a problem of uh, uh, people who are fasting. They say we follow Sudhir and, uh, and the others. Uh, it's a common mystic that happens every year. So if you are familiar with uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very good question. So listen, it's a very long discussion. It's called Mas'ala to Ikhtilaf al Mataliya, sah? It comes up every year. The strongest, inshallah ta'ala, that my heart is inclined to is that the countries that share the same time zone are together. And the countries that don't share the same time zones are not together. So for example, if it's, some people, they love Saudi Arabia, sah? And they look at Saudi Arabia. Another country that has the same time zone as us announces that they sighted the moon. But we're like, no, Saudi didn't, from the, and that's wrong. Are we all together? We have to all follow up that same, same time zone. So Pakistan announced it. In the UK and Pakistan, what's the, what's the, what's the time difference? Allah, Allahumma barik. Who's head? They are, are they ahead of five, five hours ahead? Of, Pakistan is five hours ahead of us. So we still share the daytime together, right? But what about Australia and the UK? It's like day and night, right? So they don't take this اختلاف المطالي, meaning we don't have the same timing, we don't share. But the countries that share the same timing, we will follow their sighting. They sight it, we will take it on board. It can come from all the countries that share the what? The, the daytime they share together and the nighttime. UAE, for example, Somalia, for example, and countries like that. If they sight it, follow it. Are we all together? Does that make sense? Just to be clear, you have to follow, follow the Jama'ah and the Masajid that are following them. Because when you decide to follow Saudi, then you have to go with the Saudi. Sahih. Right? Yes. Not, not anybody else. No, correct. Individuals here cannot decide. No, no, the individuals here can't. Yes, yeah, true. Correct. Sure. Uh, continuing that, uh, usually the, the, they disobey the uh, Qab, <coughs> who is uh, in charge of the country, and uh, say, oh, is following the, uh, uh, the whatever has system is there, so he has so they that's the yeah, they disobey the the the, uh, the Qab who is the head of uh, of uh, ulama or something like that mm -hmm. to follow the their own desire. Yeah. Yeah, again, the issue of sighting has got to, it's nothing to do with a qadi or anything like that. It's just an honest, reliable person sights the moon in a country and it's proven that he's a reliable, honest person. We follow that sighting of that person, just like Ibn Umar sighted it. So that one person is enough for us. Are we all together? Some countries use calculation to determine the Yeah, the sighting of the moon is not based on calculation, brothers. It's only based on those two. Sighting of the moon and the what? Even his telescope. Should we follow telescopes? Or does it have to be the bare eye? The naked eye? Yeah? That's what the hadith is. Are we all together? It has to be the what? It's the naked eye. Ah, the bid'ah. Ay naam. Takalluf. Ziyada ala nas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next question. What are the conditions of fasting? Yeah. You in the blue. Allahumma barik. You look down for sure. What are the conditions of fasting? You have to be a Muslim. You have to have the ability to fast. You have to be sane. And you have to. Age of puberty. Give that brother thought. MashaAllah, Mubarik. MashaAllah, which is Akhlaq Khairan. The next question is When is it obligatory to come with the intention of fasting for Ramadan? Are you the brother at the back with the glasses? And MashaAllah, with a nice afro. Uh, stand up. Are you? For Ramadan, when do I have to come with, my, when, with the intention? No, for fasting of Ramadan, when do I have to come with the intention for that fasting? The intention. Huh? The beginning of where? Don't tell him, don't tell him brothers, I can see you guys telling him. The beginning of Ramadan, correct. Give him the thawb, Allahumma barik. MashaAllah. Is this thawb like 
one size for everybody. <laughs> yeah. What's the ruling of the person who cited the moon himself for Ramadan, but nobody took his word for it? Can he fast for the month of Ramadan? Yes. It's rejected, but can he fast? MashaAllah, Allah, I'm better give that brother a thawb, MashaAllah. How many witnesses are needed for the entering of Ramadan? MashaAllah, the brother, the young brother there, with the hoodie, Sportsland. Hey, Sana. Is it Sportsland? Sports club, hey? Yeah? One witness is needed for the entering of Ramadan. Okay, I'm going to ask you another question. What about the leaving of Ramadan? Allahumma <laughs> barik. Allahumma barik. This is your thought, mashallah. Did you know that I was going to ask you that question? Allahumma barik. Who is allowed to break their fasting of Ramadan? Hey, yeah, at the back with the black turban. Yes, stand up. Who is allowed to break their fasting in the month of Ramadan? The sick person, good. Yeah? The, you said what, the sick person, what was the second? The traveler, good. The woman who's on her menstruation, hey? The woman who's pregnant or breastfeeding. That's good. Allahumma barik. Give the brother the thawb, mashallah. Postnatal is like the menstruation. Very good. Correct. The brother, mashallah, give him the thawb. What is the description of the um, food that is given? to the person who is either elderly or he has a terminal illness. Yeah? What other two, what are hey? It can be raw food he can give them or he can cook it for them. Allahumma barik. MashaAllah, a white thawb for you. Um, who can tell me three things that corrupt your fasting? Hey Ibrahim, Fadal. Al akl, was shul. That's one. Al jima, That's two. One more. Al akl was shul is one. Al Jima is two. Uh, number three. Come on, Dad. Oh, I did. You're trying to say I didn't. <laughs> no, no, I need three. It's not fair to give him a thobe and everybody else works for it. Man ghashana falaysa minna. Hey, you can help him with the third one. Hey, you gulayt, faddal. Menstruation breaks your fasting, sah? It does. At taqayyu amdan. Deliberately vomiting. All of those break. Hijama, we said, right? According to the view of some of the scholars, sah? All of those things, we mention it. We even mentioned the istinshaq of the bukhur. Sniffing the bukhur. We mentioned all of that, sah? Yeah, the water, the same thing, huh? The niya, that's of course, definitely, yes, it breaks the fasting. If the person changes his intention. Sah? Mughadiyat. Al Mughadiyat is eating food. It's considered like al akl. Anything that gives him nutrition. Sah? Okay, what? Huh? 
<coughs> so that's the question now. The scholars, when it comes to al mu'ma alayhi, the person who faints, some of the scholars, they put it under the category of what? The one who sleeps. If that fainting is for a short period of time, they say he takes the ruling of sleeping. If it's long, then they put it under junoon, insanity, because he lost his aql. Does that make sense? But when I research this issue, what's the barbit to separate it? What's long, what's short? Is it's, it's, it's very, <coughs> are we all together? It's very blurry. But when we say al-mu'ma alayhi here, I'm adding the one who's in the what? Intensive U, uh, ICU, sah? So he's been in there for a very long time, three days he's been out. He doesn't know what happened. He woke up, it's like, what happened? Definitely that one takes the ruling of the what? The one whose pen is lifted. The one like in who has fainted for like four hours, five hours, and he's been out, he takes the ruling of a person who's sleeping. That's more accurate. And the people that have epilepsy, when they faint, some of them bite their tongue and there's blood and whatnot. So the one who fainted, Asalatan, who lost his consciousness, And he's short the time he faints. And they faint, and then some of them are out for two hours, three hours. Some of them could be longer, but usually they shake or something. So here. Blurred, and then they're out for a few hours. Oh. They, they didn't deliberately. Uh, no, it happens, but it just happens. Some of them are triggered by different things, some by light. But why were they fasting in the first place for? It's not a wedge. There's no wedge on him. But they're not, they don't have, it's not something like uh, control. So but the epilepsy, but not eating nutrition can affect it, right? It can weaken the person uh, who's got epilepsy. Maybe, it's not guaranteed. I've seen a lot of people with epilepsy who fast here, right? I believe, the, oh Allah, 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 Allah. <laughs> It doesn't break your fasting, inshallah. Even hijama, the strongest opinion is that it doesn't break your fasting, but it's best to avoid it. Okay. Another question. What's the best voluntary fasting? Anyone who mentions this gets two thobes. What is the best voluntary fasting? Allahumma barik. The way you stood up for that one, hey, it's yours. It's yours. Are you a candy, Asumu? Okay, give him two. Give him two. Two thobs. Yeah, two thobs for you. Are you? I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. I started this morning, 6.30 a.m. So I'm exhausted now. My energy is all gone. I ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to make this a form of benefit for all of you. And may Allah forgive me for any shortcomings or errors or faults that came from me. Anything I said that was wrong or incorrect is from who? Me and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka atu wili. I just want to say to the masjid organizers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bestow His never ending mercy onto them for allowing me to come here to share some benefits with you all. And I also want to say to everyone who came here, May Allah bless you all. May Allah reward you. Um, and, and Jazakumullah khairan for thinking good of me and believing that you might benefit something from me. I'm really thankful for that. Jazakumullah khairan. With that being said, I want to say I have a very tough policy on this issue. Umar radiallahu anhu, he saw Abu Musa al-Ash'ari walking and there were people walking with him. And so he said to him, Umar radiallahu anhu, don't do this. This is a humiliation for the people who are following you. And it's also what? Not good for you. So in the Sharia, an entourage, following one person is not a good thing. So I love you all from here. Okay. And inshallah ta'ala, if I don't see you again in this world, I hope to see you at the fountain of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we drink from his palm. شربة هنيئة لا نظمع بعدها أبدا بارك الله فيكم وجزاكم الله خيرا